yeah, it was really tough to to know that this was the moment to move on. I always thought it'd be really easy to retire and and walk away from rugby um, because I've always known what I want to do. Like I wanted to be a, a pilot long before I wanted to be a rugby player. So I always thought, you know, whenever I've signed contracts before, I've always think, all right, is this the time to do it or do I do I keep playing rugby? And it's always felt right to keep playing rugby. Whereas now that I know this is the right time for me to to pursue my original dream of, of wanting to become a pilot. It's been it's been a really hard decision to get to. Um, there's so much I'm going to miss, which I'm, I'm sure we get on to, but also like when I think about what lies ahead, I get really excited. My driving tomorrow for the morning is is through one of the flight paths for one of the runways at Edinburgh. So I often see a plane landing just as I'm driving in. And uh, even when I, whenever I see the plane, I was get excited thinking oh what are the pilots seeing at that moment what are they thinking if it's windy and um how are they adapting and just the yeah that that gen generally gets me pretty excited so, yeah and no, definitely sad on one part that i'm gonna um be be walking away from rugby but also i'm really proud of the fact that i'm uh i'm choosing to to do this now because it's what i've always wanted to do and um Obviously, this day would come. Okay, I mean, getting to this day has probably been like 10 years in the making. Like, it's always what I've wanted, knowing it's what I wanted to do. Um, but yeah, from definitely from about 2013, 2014, that's when I've actually been working towards this. That's when I started flying and getting my private pilot's license and figuring out exactly the route I'm going to take when I do decide to, to do this. And, and now we're, we're here and it's getting very real. And um, yeah, it's, it's really exciting. It's going to be really tough when I walk out of Murrayfield for the last time. And there's so much I'm going to miss. I think first and foremost, the people in and around the club um, definitely take for granted seeing 40, 50 people every day, having that social interaction, close friends. Um, going to miss that. Running out of the dam, I like really enjoy the last couple of years of, of making you know the dam our, our home at Edinburgh. I love running out of there with you know the smoke and the fans cheering. And, and then even after the game, and the fans waiting and, and clapping you off the pitch. Gonna miss that so much. Mm. Yeah, I think I mean, the main thing I'm gonna miss is the the day-to-day -day interaction with everyone. You know, the first part of my training to be a pilot will be a pretty intense ground and school course where a lot of that will all, will be on me in a self-study. So um, that definitely makes me a little bit nervous to, to know that's coming, but also also excitement as well, knowing that's kind of the first step on my next journey. I've had I've had loads of good times. It's been twelve twelve year career. Um, go back a bit. Obviously that Toulouse match in 2012, 37,000 into Murrayfield. I think I only came on for the last ten minutes. But anyone who knows, I mean, the game like that, as long as you get on and you you really feel part of it. And yeah, I think I came on. Um, I almost got turned over straight away. But I remember we actually got the penalty, and I remember being very relieved because I did, did like an umbre pickup got a little bit isolated and I thought it cost us the game but luckily we got the penalty and um, it's amazing the things you remember and I remember the, the the final whistle Greg kicking the the conversion and then and then jumping and, and hugging 40 which was pretty awesome got a great picture actually considering what he'd ended from my career from that point onwards more recently definitely my 150th game for Edinburgh down at Sale um, is the one that really sticks out I shared that moment with with Christine who got his 100th at the time and just that whole occasion was was brilliant. Um, a big, a big European game down there against a big Premiership team, and and we turned them over. We won, put a really good performance, and then um, getting presented with my sort of my, you know, my presence and stuff after from the lads was really really touching. And then again, like the bus trip back, I'll play a bit of things I'll remember. Good bit of crack on the bus. There was there was food. There was you know there were a few drinks. It was it was just really a really good experience and, and I'm glad because um, I don't think we won my 50th or my 100th game so uh, to win that that 150 I think I captained that day as well and, and to get in a big European game was, was epic yeah so that was sticks in mind for sure spent spent loads uh, I remember probably since I started playing out in front under 16s so what was that five years ago that's <laughs> been a bit longer <laughs> um that, if that's probably, I probably pulled on that under 16 jersey and I uh, realised, yep, I want to play for Edinburgh now. Um, I've always been very ambitious and driven, so like, as soon as I got the first taste for it, it was, yeah, I want to play for the full team. I remember growing up watching Ali Hogg play for Edinburgh. 
he definitely inspired me. Like the way he played as a back row, free running, scoring lots of tries. Um, I, I used to really want to copy that, and I used to score lots of tries at school. I scored a few tries for Edinburgh as well, but I definitely looked up to him and saw the way he conducted himself and played for Edinburgh and Scotland, and, and he was a big inspiration to me, obviously being a back row at the time. So, uh, yeah, then it was after after under 20s, yeah, um, got my first contract with Edinburgh, and from then it's just been amazing. Um, learned loads, had some amazing times, had some really tough times as well. Um, obviously moving to Hooker was it was the best thing for me and it's been amazing for my career but at the time it was really tough. I was playing week in week out for Edinburgh at back row. Um, I've been on the bench for Scotland and I really thought man, was, my career was about to take off. <coughs> take off. And then um, <coughs> and then I get a phone call to say that um, they'd like me to move to Hooker and what I thought. So it was, that, that was that was tough because I knew I kind of had to do it because it was from coming from the, the Scotland coach at the time. So I knew if I wanted to achieve what I wanted to achieve, that was kind of the route I had to go. So it was admitting that it was probably going to be two years of my life to to retrain as a hooker to then get to where I want to go. Um, so that was that was tough, but also like getting through that and knowing that within two years I was then I was like I was part of the 2015 World Cup squad. Um, within two years of changing, which was amazing. So it's, knowing that I could do it, <clears throat> that also gives me real confidence for my future as well because. It's going to be two years worth of training now to be a pilot. So knowing I've already gone through something like that, I, you know, it's tough, but it, it does go quick and and the rewards are there to be collected if you're willing to work hard. So um, yeah, definitely feel like having that experience behind me will be will be good. Um, but yeah, just I look back at my time in Edinburgh so fondly, and uh, I've seen a lot of people come and go, and I've seen the club go from strength to strength. And I, I do believe that the club's in a better place than it's ever been. So in November, I'm going to be pursuing my next career as a commercial airline pilot. I've got a few um, ideas of how I want to do it. I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to do my flight training yet, but there's a few really good schools in Scotland that I'm looking at. Um, the first part of it is, is ground school. So there's nine months of, of ground school followed by another you know, nine to 12 months of, of flight training. Um, I'm really excited for it. I feel like my lessons in rugby are going to be huge in terms of the transferable skills from it. Um, certainly allow around sort of learning from failure, like allowing yourself to fail to, to improve. I feel like it's always been a strength of mine. Like I love to learn. Like I love learning new things. I've always been keen to improve myself. If, if there's, if I see someone, you know, young or old in the club doing something well, I'll tap them up and ask how they make so many meters in contacts or how they make so many dominant tackles. Um, you know, guys that throw particularly or scrum particularly well. I love, I love learning. So, um, you know, I've, I, I realized very early on in my rugby career as well, that if you want to achieve great things, I had huge aspirations when I was first coming through. Like I wanted to play 100 plus games for Edinburgh. I wanted to play for and captain my country. I realized that to achieve that sort of thing, your work ethic and every application just has to be through the roof. Um, and I achieved all those things like on purpose because I applied myself so well every day and I'll definitely be looking to take that into my next career as well. Like I want to, I've got huge aspirations to be a captain of an airline one day. Like I would love that more than anything. So yeah, I'll be applying, I'll be applying those same, those same attitudes and philosophy into my next career for sure. I feel like I've got so many experiences in rugby that, you know, I, I don't want to just completely walk away. Like I definitely want to keep my, my toe in water somehow. Like I remember when I first started playing professionally very early on and I was went back and did a bit of school coaching, which I, I loved. I could definitely see myself doing a bit of that. Um, but I'll just need to to figure that out as we go. Obviously with the flying, that'll be quite intense. Um, but definitely, definitely keen to, to stay involved if there's a way possible, yeah. I owe a huge amount to my wife, Natalie. Uh, she's just, without, I would probably, without even realizing, she's sacrificed so much of her time to allow me to, to chase my dreams. You know, like I spoke about earlier, huge ambitions and dreams when I first started playing rugby and she's been there for, for all of it. Um, so yeah, well her massive thanks, especially since the arrival of our son, like she's, uh, she's been the one bringing Ollie to games and, um, dealing with, uh, dealing with what comes with that and, um, uh, yeah, allowing me just, just so I can get a picture of them after like things that I could know I can show them in the future. Um, she does all that for me. So yeah, I owe her, I owe her a lot and I love her very much. I also want to say a big thanks to Rob Moffat 
who was the Edinburgh coach back in 2010, who signed me up. Uh, my first professional contract allowed me the route into my boyhood club, um, took me on and, and played me loads in that first year. So hugely grateful to him. I'm, I saw him recently actually when we had our open training session down at Melrose. So it was great to kind of reconnect with him there. And lastly, I just want to thank the fans, the people that come support us. Um, Edinburgh's never been the smoothest of rides in terms of results. For the time that I've been here, we've had some great results. We've had some not so great results, but they've stuck with us. And uh, they're the ones that are always there cheering us on, you know, win, lose or draw. Um, the fact that they, they come out in their forces week after week and it's been great that we've, we've been able to give them the dam as well because I know they love coming there to support us and we get a lot of energy playing at the dam because they're there. You know, it's, it wouldn't be the same playing there if, if, if it wasn't full and if they didn't come support us. So um, my best memories playing for Edinburgh are, are uh, you know, big wins, especially recently playing at the dam, even like big scrum penalties. You know, getting a scrum penalty and the crowd's going nuts, scoring a try. Um, off and off a mall, but the crowd are cheering. You know what? That, 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 those are amazing things that I'll remember, and um, they're the huge part of why, why those moments are really special. So, yeah, massive thanks to all our fans.